All right. I'm going to put on something else because there's some personal stuff I don't want. Um, the blog is something that God gave me about a year and a half ago that I wrote regarding the Joseph anointing. And then I post it back on top, uh, on the blog again, because uh, as usual, uh, almost every year, there's talk about uh, end times and talk about the comet hitting the earth and talk about earthquake, talk about tsunami, uh, talk about the Lord coming, you know, <laughs> by this Christmas and whatnot. A lot of Christians fall into this trap. And even my wife and I was for a little bit falling into this trap. But, you know, you got to learn from your mistakes and, and awaken. Um, if you look at gold prices, gold prices hit its high in uh, about August 2011. And that was a lot of talk about the L9 comment, right? That many Christians uh, were... Uh, in the chatterboxes, if you will. It was the most high, about $1,900 per ounce. And then after that, when the comet disintegrated, right, uh, before it got into our atmosphere, and whether that was a big one or not, because some people probably thought they prayed, right, and it disintegrated. But regardless, after that, the gold started crashing. And gold is now at 11, about $1,100 per ounce. And I'm talking about this because there, this chatter in the internet and within the, Korean, uh, within the Christian community is on the rise again. And, you know, I talked about this uh, last week or uh, the week before. Regard, what is the Joseph anointing, right? Has God's people been called to store up? Is that our job? And... I wrote about the Joseph anointing, and it's in my blog if you would like to read it. And here's a comment from one of our sisters. She's not, you know, she, she's uh, a Chinese sister. I'm not going to say who it is, but I want to read you this. Thank you for this teaching <clears throat> to clarify some major concepts. For years, I was taught by different people that Joseph's anointing means that we need to stock up the worldly good for calamity days ahead of us. On the other hand, Jesus on the Sermon on the Mount told us not to stock up the worldly goods, right? He said, moth will eat up your worldly goods. The two ideas seem to contradict each other. Then I was told that we need to know when to do what. Sometimes God wants us to stock up, and sometimes God wants us to give it all away. It is up to us to listen to God what to do at that moment. One of the strategies of false prophets because they don't have a clear answer, will give you two answers. You get your own answer, right? And if God tells you to stock up for your area, you stock up. Or if you get your answer and you're, you're in a position to give, you give. So they give uh, mixed messages. So it is up to us to listen to God what to do at this moment. So confusing. See, God is not a God of confusion. When there's any type of confusion, you need to stop. Okay, you need to stop and start thinking and praying instead of moving towards uh, confusion. I know a couple years ago, the Joe's army people were told to stock up for the impending calamity. Who is this Joe's army that they're talking about, right? Then when it didn't come, it was explained as their prayer worked so that calamity was averted or avoided. Now this teaching tells apart the worldly living from the kingdom living. And as I was reading this, it's very clear in the, uh, here why it's not God, right? When people tell you, when these so-called prophets out there tell you to stock up, why it's not God? Because they're telling you, okay, they're saying that God is telling them something's coming. And so they, get, they put fear into God's people. They get to stock up, right? As they stock up, they're telling them, pray now. Pray to prevent this. And then when it doesn't 
to them it doesn't happen. They're like, we did it. Your prayer worked. Why is it not God? Why would God? See, there's no faith in that. Why would God tell you to pray and stock up as a backup plan? You see, that's, that's not God. Because even if something was coming, God would just tell us to pray and your faith, right? Your faith would stop or move God's heart. He's not going to tell you, just in case your faith is not enough, just in case you fail, you make sure you got your backup plan going. And have your, have your food, have your water, have your gold stocked up. That's not God. Many Christians, you know, there's a report going out right now. You know, we're, we're kind of, we're not really following, but we're looking at the chatter on this. There's a shortage of emergency food. Because so many Christians are buying this. You know, it's created an industry. And I'm going to tell you, you buy canned food, it's going to expire first before calamity comes. All right? And, and so, even some big name uh, ministries out there back in 2011, 2012, was telling their people, and they themselves were selling these buckets of emergency food on their ministry program. I was watching it. And they're big names. And, and they were saying, tsunami's coming, earthquake's coming, especially West Coast, right? Perhaps they just discerned it properly, improperly. This, they discerned it wrong. Because a spiritual earthquake is coming, right? And, and if God plants us here, He's not going to let calamity just come take us out. Randomness does not supersede God's will, right? You, if you are in the will of God, and you are in His plan, and you are obeying Him, and you're doing what He wants, you're not going to go outside and get hit by a car. The devil can't take you out like that. Because that means the devil is more stronger than God then, if the devil can take you out. The only way the devil can take you out is through God. He has to have God's permission first. And God will only give permission if you are in rebellion and you are moving away from God's plan. Randomness cannot take you out. If I am doing God's work, I am running His church, God has a plan. I cannot just go out and get struck by lightning and die. And say, oh, Pastor Stephen's in heaven now. Oh, such a... That's, that's not how God operates. And then, oh, we'll, we'll have to find another pastor to continue. If I get struck by lightning and I get taken out, that was judgment. And the church will shut down. Many pastors get judged. The randomness of life does not take them out. Random sickness does not take them out. Car accidents are not taking them out. God is taking them out. And we have to really understand this because nothing supersedes God's plan. Right? Because if I say that uh, that pastor got into a plane accident because there was a play malfunction and that was just an accident or a car crash or someone got hit by a semi-truck. Pastor got smithereens by a semi-truck. Do you think God cannot prevent that? Oh, there goes my servant. Too bad. That's not how God operates. If we are in His will and we are doing what God wants, God's going to protect you. Amen. You are the carrier then of his message. And he will protect you as long as you are seeking and doing his will. But if you have his message and you start heading towards enemy territory, now he's going to go after you. And that's what's happening. Amen. Amen. 
And so, in, the, in Jeremiah, when judgment was coming to Jerusalem, God said, find me one person, just one righteous person, I'll spare the city. God's not going to let his children, those who are really seeking him, die out of coincidence or random calamity. If we are a willing people who wants to do God's will in the midst of this darkness, right? Because we're right next to San Francisco, in California, in the midst of the darkest place, he's going to let his light shine in the midst of the darkest place. That's his character. You know? And so he'll work that way. And if I know calamity is coming, right, a lot of times we're not going to know exactly when. And so my job is not to worry about what's coming for the world because there's always been wars, right? The Bible, Matthew 24, when you hear rumors of wars, when you hear about earthquakes, when you hear about all this, the end is not yet. Okay, that's what it says. The end is not yet. These are just the beginning. That's what the Bible says. Just the beginning. And so we are entering the beginning as you hear these calamities. And if you are, if you do hear calamities coming and you are in fear, then you have not experienced perfect love. Right? Even if it was coming and you know God, and you know God, then you will be at peace. Because you know God's going to either save you or, or do something. Amen? Amen? So I have no fear anymore, you know. It's like I've learned and uh, from his, what he has done in my life, I have learned. I don't need to stock up on emergency food thinking God's not going to feed me. Right? That I, and even, like I said, even if you stock up, how long that going to last you? One month. You need a lot of water. Okay, I looked into it before. And if you think you're going to carry that, which gas station you think you're going to go that has a short line? All the gas is going to be packed. And if you lose power here, you can't even pump the gas. And you've seen how traffic is, right? How are you going to get out of this area? And then you got some emergency light. One million people going to see your light. Ooh, they got light. Let's go. Maybe they got food. You're dead. They're going to get you. It's better to have no light. Better not to be stocked up. And you pray. And then God's going to give you those daily provisions. Right? But if I stock up, I'm telling God, I don't trust you. I'm trusting on Assyria. I'm trusting in Egypt. I'm trusting in what I see, what I can store. That's what I'm trusting in. And if you buy commodities, precious metal, how are you going to carry that around? Let's go! Come on! It's too heavy! You might as well just give it away. Right? Give it away. Because Paul, what did Peter say? I have something more precious than gold. Right? I have the name of the Lord. Amen? Amen. So, these people who call themselves Joe's army, they have a pattern. You know, I can start a ministry with fear. I can look at the news and tell you, terrorists are coming. Earthquakes are coming. People get really excited, right? And, and to, to buy and stock up is exciting too, right? It's fun actually. Ooh, let's ooh, ooh, ooh. bulletproof vest. Right? Tenth gear, you know, they buy guns. Like that. Our minister Lance, all right? He used to have a bulletproof vest. Actually, he does. So if you want to buy it, right? Anyone who's still following this, you want to buy it, go ahead. He got one. He's trying to get rid of it. So now he has fun with it because you see, he, he learned. He's learned. And he's like, okay, I'm done with that. I'm going to now go after God. I'm not going after fear. 
I'm not going after what I see can help me. I'm going after God, right? And so to go after God is to let go. You need to let go. Let go of, of, of what you hold onto the world, right? Of, of your own strength, your own knowledge of survival. Self-preservation is an idol, right? It's an idol because it means that I don't trust God. Amen? Amen. All right. Okay, so anyway, revival's coming. And the real Joe's army is us. Okay, God told us we're the real Joe's army, Amen. or we are the Joe's army. And Joe's army for the last day are an army that prays, period. Amen. We read part of Pastor Kim Young Bill's sermon last night, right? He, and the Holy Spirit told him, in the days of Acts, the book of Acts, before anything manifests, power, miracles, and if you look at the Lord's pattern, right? Lord Jesus never, I, there's nothing in here in the Bible, a pattern of God's people stocking up. Joseph, that's, they stocked up the world's commodities. We're using Pharaoh's money, using, excuse me, using Pharaoh's people to stock up for God's people. We don't do that work. Our work is spiritual. Amen? So, uh, though, before miracles, what did Jesus always do? He just prayed. He went up to the mountain, prayed. And the Holy Spirit told Pastor Kim, the days of Acts, before the miracles manifestations, what is the pattern? They pray. Amen. And this is why in the modern time now, we have a lack of miracles, a lack of God's presence, because most of the church, they do not pray. And even though we are praying, we have to build up. You see, it takes years of building up and accumulating our prayers into our spiritual barn. And so now then we can withdraw from it. Just like in the natural realm, if you want to buy a house, you can't just say, I'm here to buy a house. Right? You can't say, God, I need this right now. It's like saying, I need it. Let's buy the house right now. The banks go, well, what, what do you got? What down payment you got? Uh, what credit you got? Uh, nothing. Well, you can't. So you got to build up your credit. You got to build up a down payment. And sometimes now, of course, they don't, uh, uh, they'll let you uh, get away without a down payment. But you still need to build up a credit, right? So there has to be a build up before you can procure an objective. Spiritually, same thing. You need a job. You need to have prayed for the job. Or you need someone else to have done it. Right? And that's why God will 